here's our agenda. So again, understanding the importance of omni-channel, I think everybody does understand that. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time with that. What we know, uh, the new normal, what's happening right now, pushing the limits, and then some um, ideas in the future. So again, so this, this, you know, I mean, pretty much says it all, um, that, you know, things, retail, uh, retail's gonna change more in the next five years than it has over the past century. And anybody who's sort of in there, you know, around, around 50 um, will certainly agree that, you know, our lives has changed probably more in the last 10 years than, than they have in our whole lives. So it's a very exciting time to be here and to be experiencing um, what's happening. Interesting, um, Tina and I use the same image here. Um, but, you know, again, the whole idea about Omnichannel is that it's 24-7. Um, it is, it's, um, you know, it's, it's everything. And it's, um, it's really important for retailers to, un to put equal emphasis on every aspect, every touch point. So power to the people. Again, as Tina uh, mentioned, it's really all about your customer. Um, and your customer is more powerful than ever. And rather than brands speaking to customers, brands are now listening to customers and allowing customers to guide them. So some of the things that are you know, happening right now in terms of um, trust, memorability, and influence is that um, online media, in some cases, is not so trustworthy. Um, you know, online media is tracking you. And it's, uh, it knows the last website you're at. It knows what the last thing you bought. And it's putting up little banners and, um, and um, you know, little, little messages to you every time you go online, which is a little bit scary. It feels a bit big brother. And certainly in my uh, opinion, it doesn't. It actually is more of a turnoff. Um, traditional media, television, um, print and print media is, you know, again, something that we're not necessarily trusting as much as we used to. Um, however, as we move more into the, um, you know, influencers and the, the trustworthy sources, we've got, um, you know, bloggers and experts are now online and, and educating us as to, you know, they're doing the research for us and helping us and not speaking from a brand's point of view. Um, Consumer influencers, again, friends, family, and colleagues are much more powerful um, than anybody these days and that we do listen to them and follow them. And then the idea of um, catering to, you know, us and understanding our needs, understanding our, I mean, in some cases, this following us online, knowing, um, you know, your zip code, knowing where you live or um, whether you're male or female or, or um, you know, what city you live in um, allows retailers to target um, specific products to you. <clears throat> so again, we all know this, that, you know, customers are more actively using mobile apps while shopping, uh, researching and comparing and looking at online, um, um, you know, feedback on products. But brick and mortar is still the preferred shopping channel. And thank goodness for us retail designers, um, it's, it's not going to end anytime soon. And in fact, it's, it's more important than ever to create a really special experience uh, when, the, when the customer does arrive at your brick and mortar shop. So um, again, looking at sort of at the United States market, but I think it could probably apply to um, you know, other international brands. Um, more isn't necessarily better in terms of real estate. So the more stores you have does not necessarily mean that you're going to be any more successful. In fact, uh, retailers are downsizing. They're, um, they're, they're getting rid of real estate. Um, and they are um, um, they're focusing on a, a, a more curated experience. So again, you can see some of the, the brands. I mean, Radio Shack has just been in the news recently. If you've been following it, they've, they're going bankrupt. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting. But what's happening, actually, just a little, little note to that, is that um, Sprint, um, the uh, telecom company in the US, is now taking over their real estate. So it's kind of there's you know, people leaving and then people coming in and taking um, real estate and, and being able to service more customers. But, in any case, um, it isn't, it, you know, real estate isn't what it's all about anymore. 